Hey, what's up, YouTube? Is your Freightliner tractor randomly cutting off while driving? If it is, then you've got the right video. This video can save you from paying over $1,500 or more to get fixed. I'll show you a step-by-step -step process of elimination on how to fix that problem. So, stay tuned. A few weeks ago, I was traveling southbound 85 uh, in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I was traveling about 72 miles per hour. Traffic was tight because they, uh, of course, they've got major infrastructure construction going on. In a hot, quick instant, the radio went off, the dash lit up, and then flashed out. And for the next three to eight seconds, everything went silent. The second thing that I noticed was the loss of my power steering. Primary and secondary air gauges uh, were losing air. Let's just say it's not the most comfortable feeling you want to have sitting behind the steering wheel of a, you know, a tractor trailer running 80,000 pounds downhill at 72 miles per hour. This happened to me not once, but four times in two days. Three times I was okay with it because I had enough time to respond. The fourth time was in a work zone with tight traffic. With this being said, if this happens to you, you have to remain extremely calm. It's difficult, but you're going to have to remain extremely calm. What you want to do is immediately check your, check your surroundings, you know, check your left and your right mirror, check what's in front of you and what's behind you. Okay, you want to try to glide to the closest shoulder. If you're nearest to the right shoulder, you know, check your right, make sure you're looking at your, your convex mirror and you're looking, you know, your spot mirror and your, uh, you know, your regular uh, rear view mirror. And uh, you want to try to glide to that shoulder you know, to get out of traffic or, you know, to keep anybody from hitting the back of you because, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's, it's extremely dangerous situation. We don't have power. Okay. In some cases, your truck may run a self test and restart itself. Yes. And sometimes your truck may repower back on. In three cases, the truck did that. Okay, I've heard of cases where a truck may have cut off once and may not do it again for another month or two. If, you know you're having a problem where it happened more than once, um, do yourself a favor, get it fixed. And I'll show you what you need to do by process of elimination. Okay, your step one, what you wanna do is turn everything off, including your battery shut off. Okay, step two, you wanna wait about two to five minutes. Then step three, with the key in the off position, what you wanna do is turn your battery shut off back on. You should have a red LED light Okay, if it's blinking, you want to replace that. If it's steady red, then you go to the next step, which is step four. Step four, you want to start your truck. While it's running, you want to go to the key ignition and move that key uh, that's in the ignition. You want to move it up and down, side to side. You know, you want to jiggle it. Okay, if there's no play and it's stiff, it's, you know, if the ring around it is tight and it's no play in it and your truck doesn't shut off, um, your ignition should be good. So you want to go to step five. Step five, you want to open your hood and locate your, your P, what they call a PNDB. It's also known as a main cutoff. Okay, go buy a new one Okay, from Freightliner. What it is, there's a relay and a sealed unit in that box, and you can't get to it. You can check your fuses. The first thing, that's what I should say. Check your fuses first. In my case, all the fuses were good. It was the There's a black box that's in case you can't get to it that relay apparently is what what's causing these freight liners that are running up and down the highway to shut off midstream okay um the unit costs about 380 dollars um from a parts place i went to Freightliner parts where they sell nothing but parts i'm not talking about a truck uh truck service that gives you parts and service there are certain freight liners that are set up for point of sales where you can go directly to get that parts and a lot of times it's going to be a lot cheaper than dealing with a service uh you know a service uh, a freight liner service center okay if you're thinking about getting this part from a truck stop you can forget it most of them don't even know what a pndb is okay i've already been through the process they don't even know what it is so what you want to do is go purchase the part Okay, then you either replace it yourself or you take the part to a truck service. Then you can take it to like a TA or any other, you know, uh, any uh, service center that normally, you know, works on trucks. Because they're, all they're going to do is replace the screws. They're going to place the unit. And it's a few couple screws. It's nothing, nothing major. Okay, it takes about 30 minutes 
okay, to replace that. And they may charge you, you know, some shops, depending on what they charge. Uh, it shouldn't cost no more than $125 in labor, okay? If you just take it to the dealer, okay, without doing any of the things that I just mentioned, they're going to charge you a diagnostics fee, okay? Then they'll charge you most likely an increased part fee. And then they're going to charge you an increased labor fee to the tune of a total of approximately $1,500, if not more. Okay, not to mention that that dealer may not fix it the same day, so it may even cost you time and money. Okay, so you got the right video. Good luck, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next video.